Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone to another installment of the LRD's Research Essentials webinar series. Today, we will be hearing from my colleague, Kathy, who will be discussing tips on how to read an academic article. Today's session will be recorded and will be shared to our YouTube page. Um, if you are pre-registered, you will receive an email with a link to the presentation recording, which you can watch at any time. Um, if you have any questions for us today, please put them in the chat section and we will get to them as soon as we can. There will also be some time reserved um, for additional questions at the end of the session. Okay, all right, and I will now turn it over to my colleague, Kathy. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the UDC Libraries How to Read an Academic Article webinar, um, which is part of our Fall 2022 Research Essential series. Um, my name is Kathy Meals. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am the Reference and Assessment Librarian here at UDC. So let's jump right on in. <clears throat> uh, in academic research, we often use academic journal articles, but they can be really difficult to read and work with. Um, so in this session, we're going to break them down. Uh, talk about what they are, how they're structured, how to read them, and how you can integrate them into your writing. Um, please feel free to put questions in the chat, uh, and at the end of the session, we will have a question and answer period. Um, this session is going to be recorded and will be posted on the library's YouTube channel. So let's start with a quick refresher on what an academic article is. Um, you might also hear them uh, it's called scholarly article. Oh, shoot. You're not seeing my screen. Oh, my goodness. Well, let me back up. All right. How's that? Yep, that's good. We can see. Okay. It. Oh, dear. I thought I had you that. <laughs> All right. Well, let me do the, the quick overview again, um, just because I had that slide. So we'll be talking about what are academic articles, how they're structured, how we read them, and how we integrate them into our writing. Okay, so quick refresher on what an academic article is. Um, you might also hear them referred to as scholarly articles or peer-reviewed articles. Uh, what does it mean for an article to be academic? So academic articles, um, which are published in scholarly journals, are a forum for research and knowledge production, where the authors who are experts or scholars in their fields present new research or new ideas to further scholarly conversation. So that scholarly conversation consists of scholars and experts continually building on the work of others, adding new data, perspectives, and analysis, because research is an ongoing process. The journals that academic articles are published in focus on specific subject areas, often really narrow ones. Um, and there's a particular context that's best for reading or using academic articles. Specifically, we use these types of articles in academic or scholarly discussion and in college level research assignments when we need to know what researchers and experts are learning and saying about a topic. So the articles published in scholarly journals undergo a peer review process to determine whether they get published and to edit and ideally improve the articles before publication. Um, here's a simplified summary of the process. <clears throat> so first, an author submits an article draft to a journal that they hope to publish their work in. Then the journal sends it to other experts or scholars in the field for them to review, um, typically in what's called a double blind review. So the author does not know the identity of the reviewers and the reviewers do not know the identity of the author. Then after reviewing the article, the reviewers provide a recommendation about whether the journal should reject or accept the article, ask some questions of the author, and offer suggestions for improvement. Um, the journal will notify the author of the decision and share the reviewer's feedback. If an article is accepted, it usually requires revision and editing. So then there is back and forth between the author and the journal editors before the article is finalized. This can sometimes be a really substantial revision and editing process. Um, the peer review process isn't always perfect, but it is intended to be a form of quality control uh, to make sure the article is of high quality. And this whole process from start to finish can be pretty lengthy, um, often taking several months. So there is a time lag between the time a research article is submitted to the time it actually appears in the journal. So how do we access journals and the academic articles that are in them? Where are they? 
So there are some journals that are freely available online and there are print versions of many journals. For the most part, academic articles are accessed through the library in subscription-based online electronic databases. Here at the UDC library, uh, the entire list of databases that students, faculty, and staff have access to is on the A to Z resource list found under the research and find tab on the library's website. Now that we know what an academic article is, uh, we'll move on to what's in academic articles and how they're structured so we know what to expect in reading and working with them. So let's discuss the general structure here. There's sometimes some variation in the naming or the order of specific sections might vary, but something like this is typically what we'll find in an academic article. So first, at the beginning on the first page, we have the title of the article right here. The names of the author or authors, the universities or institutions that the authors work at, and other information about the article. So perhaps the name of the uh, the journal that this appears in, the volume number, the number of the issue, and the date it was published. Page numbers will be in some corner usually. If we end up using this article in our own research, we should take note of all that information um, because that's all information that we'll need for our work cited lists. If we ever wanna learn more about the specific authors and their qualifications or about the publication itself, we can just Google them for more information. <clears throat> Then we have the abstract. The abstract is a short summary of the article. What were the authors trying to find out in their research? How did they set out trying to find it out? And what did they find in their work? And what meaning did they find in the results? Then the introduction and literature review. Here we'll find a description of the issue that the author studied and background on the previous research in this area. This section answers the question of how this research relates to the topic and fits into the landscape of previous or existing research in this field. Remember that academic articles are part of a scholarly conversation where scholars and experts are continually building on the work of other scholars and experts. So this section is where the authors need to put in the specific, put into context the specific research they will be presenting for us as readers to understand. This section is usually where you'll find the author's research questions. Then we have the method section. This section will present and describe the author's analysis of their data. It might include statistical analysis, data tables or charts, um, or some other visualization of the data. Then the discussion section. This section is the author's interpretation of what their results mean and how they fit into the existing research on the topic. But the authors aren't only telling us what they found. So in addition to their findings, they're providing their analysis and interpretation of the findings. That is explaining why they think they found what they did, what their results might mean, what their work tells us, and how their work contributes to the larger scholarly conversation we've discussed today. This section often includes a discussion of the limitations of the research. No research study is perfect. Uh, so were there any factors that might've impacted the research and what were they? And then the conclusion. This is a recap of the research, its findings, and the author's analysis and interpretation of the results. Um, and often, in an example of how scholarship is an ongoing conversation, the authors will suggest potential future areas of research based on additional questions that came out of their research. Then lastly, the references list or works cited list or bibliography, depending on what you call it. This is the full list of all of the sources the authors used in their research with full citations that include all of the information a reader would need to go and find the source on their own. <clears throat> so when we first look at an academic article, it can be pretty intimidating. Um, they can be long, they're usually not very visually appearing, appealing, to be honest, and they can use really complicated or specialized vocabulary. So let's talk about some strategies for how to approach and read these types of articles. So the initial task is to figure out whether a given article is going to be useful to us or relevant for our research at all. So is this article one that we really want to spend a lot of time with and dig in on? Or is it maybe not that useful to us after all, and it would be better to move on to other articles? Um, before we spend time reading the whole article, 
we can skim and make an assessment by looking at a couple sections in particular. So the first thing to do when we approach an academic article is to read the abstract, that brief summary or overview of this. The abstract will help us understand whether this article is related or relevant to what we're working on and will help us in our research. Reading the abstract can also help in the search process for more sources. Often we can find useful terminology um, or keywords that we can use to search in databases for other sources. If the abstract suggests that the article won't be useful, there's no need to read on. Uh, we can move on to other sources. But if the article seems promising, then we can flip toward the end of the article to the discussion and conclusion sections. These sections will provide more information on the main arguments in the conclusions and help us further determine the article's relevance or non-relevance to our work. Then if those sections look good, it's time to read the rest of the article in more depth. So at this stage, when we're reading the whole article, we can use the headings and subheadings to navigate through the article and break it into much more manageable chunks. So now let's talk about how we use academic articles in our work. When we use academic articles in our work, our research papers and our research projects, remember that we're entering into the scholarly conversation that we've discussed earlier. That way that scholars and experts are building on previous work by contributing their own research and their own new interpretations and analyses. When we incorporate academic articles into our work, then we too are participating in that scholarly conversation. We are scholars. So our job in research papers or projects is to contribute our own unique arguments and analysis. So it's not just enough to stick a citation in. Rather, we need to say what we make of the research, what are our thoughts, and what is our analysis of what it means? How does the work of these other scholars help us answer our research question? One way of thinking about how to use academic articles is called the BEAM method. It's an acronym for background, evidence, analysis, and methods. So we might use a source as background to provide context or information that our audience will need to understand our research. We can use sources to help the reader understand our research question and the own work, our own work that we'll be presenting. We might use sources as an exhibit, as evidence to support our own argument or analysis by pointing to the article's data, uh, its conclusions, or the interpretations that the authors present. Or we might use a source as an argument. So we engage with the arguments in the source um, to support them, maybe contradict them, or maybe add nuance to our own arguments and analysis that we're presenting. And then lastly, we might use a source as method, taking the approaches that a source used in its research methodology and applying them for our own work. Once we know how we're going to use an article, we can incorporate it into the actual body of our writing in three ways by quoting the article, by summarizing its arguments or ideas, or by paraphrasing what the authors have written. So when we quote, we are using the author's exact words, and we need to put quotation marks around them to show that they are the exact words. <clears throat> we should aim not to make the quotes too long. Instead, we should really try to incorporate them into sentences and try to use them only when the authors have put something so perfectly that there's really no better way to say it. When we summarize, but we're taking many ideas or substantial parts of a source, distilling them down into their essence and putting them into our own words. And when we paraphrase, we're taking a specific idea or analysis and putting it into our own words. So summarizing and paraphrasing can be hard. Um, it's a lot harder than quoting, but putting a source's ideas and analysis in our own words shows that we've really engaged with the source and demonstrates good, strong critical thinking. And no matter whether we quote, summarize, or paraphrase, any time we use anyone else's words or ideas, words or ideas, we must cite them. We have to give credit where credit is due and show the reader what parts of the scholarly conversation we're building our own analysis on. So citing sources can be tricky and citing an academic work can be complicated. So if you have questions about citing sources, the UDC library can help you with that. Uh, we have a help guide on citing sources on our website, and you can always ask a librarian for help with citing. We'll share contact information for the library in a few minutes. Okay, that is all we have for our formal presentation today. Uh, we hope this was useful and we can take questions now.
feel free to put questions in the chat or you can just ask them verbally. Well, if there's no questions, I think we may wrap up. Um, we'll okay. have this recorded on YouTube uh, and put on YouTube later today. So you can feel free to revisit this conversation there or share it with your classmates. Thank you so much, Kathy. And I'll stop.